Stay tuned for Herbert Marshall as the man called X transcribed. Screen stars Joan Fontaine and Herbert Marshall will appear in this Sunday's Theater Guild on the air presentation. It's A.A. A. Milne's fascinating story, Michael and Mary. Another Sunday night chime favorite is the authentic Tales of the Texas Rangers starring Joel McRae. Remember this Sunday night on NBC for the Theater Guild on the air with Herbert Marshall and Joan Fontaine and Tales of the Texas Rangers with Joel McRae. The National Broadcasting Company presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. It began near the island of Xenophon, off the coast of Greece in the Aegean Sea began when a giant transport plane came plunging helplessly down from the clouds to the sparkling blue waters below. One day later, in Athens, Greece, the disaster that hit that plane caused another. It was then that a gray-haired, simply-dressed woman paid a visit to the chief and me in the offices of the Bureau, high up above the teeming streets of New York City. Now, just why did you come here to the Bureau, Mrs. Masters? You see, it was because of my son, Arides. He lives in Athena, in Greece, where I come from. Your son is Arides Masters? Yes, yes, a doctor. Sure. Chief, you remember Dr. Masters, one of the greatest research men in the world. Worked with us during the war on battle fatigue, war neuroses. Oh, sure, Ken, of course. Come to think of it, I saw his name in the papers just a month or two ago, didn't I? Yeah. He's doing some advanced work on cancer research in Athens. On the track of something, too, according to the article. Yes. My son wrote me letters telling me about some medicine, miracle workers, he called them. The name I have here. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. What are they, Ken? Radioactive isotopes, Chief. Isotopes? Miracle workers of science is right. They've been using them as tracers to determine the cause of certain diseases. Chief, radioactive isotopes might hold the clue to curing any number of diseases. Tuberculosis, cancer. Apparently, Dr. Mastos is going to use them in his cancer research. No. No, Arides will never use them. Oh? You see, my son is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. He was shot to death. Shot? Then that's why you came to us. You want us to find his killer? No. No, I do not believe in revenge. What is done is done. My son is gone. But his work must live on. And yesterday, I get another letter from a friend in Athens. These things my son won't have never arrived. I see. Go on, please. So I go to the company today. What company, Mrs. Master? Uh, the Cedar Mercantile Company. Cedar Mercantile Company? Uh, they are the ones who were to send these things to Athens, to my son. But the man will not help me, will tell me nothing, only to come here for the government to assist me. You will help, please. You will see that my son's work can continue. I promise you this, Mrs. Mastos. Everything your government can possibly do to help is going to be done. Ah, so that is good. I will go home now. You know, I'm very proud of my son, of his work. Almost as proud as I am of my country. Well, what do you think, Chief? Ken, the Bureau's already got a report on those missing isotopes. Huh? Sure. 
A hundred units were shipped to Athens 60 days ago. They were lost overboard while being transferred to another ship near the island of Xenophon. Xenophon? That's all that lies behind this. An unfortunate accident. I wonder. Hmm? Chief, what do you think a hundred units of isotopes would bring on an international black market, say in Eastern Europe? Oh, probably a couple of million dollars. Ken. Chief, I'm paying a visit to the Sador Mercantile Company. Pay the man out of petty cash, Herman. It's only two million dollars. Shush, 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 shush. Don't be some petrous Prince Krapunik. You'll have to stand in line with the others. Pagan. Pagan. Oh. Get your feet off that desk and wake up. I'll have your head for waking me up like this. I... Oh. Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagon, what are you doing here at the Sador Mercantile Company? Where? Oh, oh, you mean here? Why, I'm the vice president and general manager in charge of mercantiles and things. So you're the one who sent Mrs. Masters to see me? Of course, I didn't know what she was talking about. Besides, I wanted you to find out about, about my salary. <laughs> that big fat man hasn't been back since. What big fat man? The one who hired me three days ago. He hasn't been back since. And the joint is clean as a thistle. No papers, no supplies, no nothing. I think I got a fast brush up somewhere. Yeah. Were there any phone calls, any, any mail? Telephone is unconnected, and the only thing in the mail was this. I uh, opened it accidentally, you understand. Oh, you're sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pagon, this is a shipping invoice. Three days ago, 50 units of radioactive isotopes were shipped Air Express via Rome to a Dr. Mitter of Athens General Hospital. What does that mean? It could mean that the Sador outfit muscled in on $3 million worth of isotopes and are going to shoot them into Eastern Europe. But, but, but... That's right, Pagan. They flew the coop after this last shipment and left you holding a bag. Oh, Mr. Thurston, then I'm working for crooks and not even getting paid on salary. Oh, I feel sick. Yeah, so do I. And I'm going to see a doctor. Hmm? What doctor? Dr. Mitter at the General Hospital in Athens. Dr. Mitter will see you now, Mr. Thurston. Oh, thanks, nurse. Well. You seem surprised, Mr. Thurston. I, I am. I didn't expect Dr. Mitter to be so feminine. Someone should have told you that the name is Eleanor Mitter. Won't you sit down? Thanks. You wish to speak with me concerning radioactive isotopes and our interest in them here at the Athens General Hospital. That's right. What can you tell me about them? We had a great man working at this hospital, Mr. Thurston. Dr. Aridus Masters. I know. Do you also know that he was very close to determining the cause and the possible cure for cancer? So he applied for radioactive isotopes under the ECA grants to Greece. He did. And the hospital contracted with the Sador Mercantile Company to send the isotopes from the United States to Athens. A hundred units of them? Yes. It's a pretty large order for one hospital to handle, isn't it? Cancer is a pretty large order for humanity to handle, Mr. Thurston. Ah. What happened to him? The first shipment was lost at sea. Wasn't another 50 unit shipped by Air Express a few days ago? It was. But the plane crashed off the island of Xenophon two days ago. Oh, Xenophon. That was the scene of the first loss, too, wasn't it? It was. Coincidence? What else could it be? They were both accidents. Yeah. What about Dr. Masters' death, Dr. Mitter? Was that, a, was that an accident, too? Dr. Masters was murdered, Mr. Thurston, while resisting a bandit who was attempting to rob him. You're sure that's what it was? I am not interested in theories about murder. Only in carrying on Dr. Masters' research, if I am able. Could you persuade your government to ship us still additional units of isotopes? It's asking us to stretch our generosity a bit, isn't it? 
We have no place else to turn. There's always the black market, Doctor. Mr. Thurston, there is no black market in radioactive isotopes. Yeah. Oh, well. Thanks for the information, Dr. Miller. I'll see if I can do anything for you. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Thurston. And thank you. Sparta, 2573, please. Mm. Hello, this is Dr. Mitter. A Mr. Ken Thurston was just here. He might possibly be taking the steamer to Xenophon. And it is also possible that Mr. Thurston is the man called X. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, how long do we have to travel in this cattle boat? <laughs> Already my stomach is telling my nose to move away. Cheer up, Pagan. We'll be in Xenophon in 24 hours. Now, this should be our cabin here. Yes? Hello, you, you must be uh, Colonel Creighton. And if I am? The passenger agent tells us we'll be sharing this cabin. The ship's pretty crowded. And... Yes, yes, I've already been informed of these miserable arrangements. The very idea of a member of the king's personal guard being forced to share his quarters with strangers. We're not complaining, Colonel. Why should you? Just bear in mind, please, that this enforced proximity does not entitle you to any social amenities. Now, if you'll excuse me, I shall leave for dinner. I trust the cabin shall be in an orderly condition upon my return. Well, <laughs> what a stiff shirt. <laughs> Am I going to tell him a couple of things or two? Yeah, sure. Let's put our bags away, Peg, on. And they'll... Yeah, come here. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Your pardon for this intrusion. My name is Demetro Sador. Mr. Thurston, it's him. It's him. The big fat man. <laughs> yes, you recognize me. My girth is difficult to disguise. <laughs> you crooked, no good, cheating me out of my salary. I'll have the, I'll have the law on you. I'll, I'll punch you black and blue. I'll, Mr. Thurston, do something. That won't be necessary. <laughs> quite right, sir. Quite right. My apologies, Zell Smith. A cable from Greece, an uh, unexpected business emergency, no time to notify you. Perhaps this uh, will suffice for back salary. <laughs> that measly little hand. Mm -hmm. A sea note? A hundred bucks? <laughs> yes, exactly. Are we still uh, enemies, my dear sir? Oh, how did you ever get such a silly idea, Mr. Sador? My dearest friend. <laughs> now, if there's any little job... All right, Sador, let's have it. You didn't come in here just to settle up with Pagan. <laughs> you have a keen mind, sir. A very keen mind. No, I came here as a friend to warn you. There is someone aboard this ship, sir, who intends to take your life. What makes you think so? My sources must remain a secret, sir. However, this much I can tell you. There is no one named Colonel Clayton connected with His Majesty's guard. Ah. At the moment, the Colonel is dining with a last-minute passenger. The lovely Dr. Eleanor Mitter of Athens. <laughs> there you have it, sir. My uh, gesture of friendship. You mentioned two names as homicidal suspects. How about adding a third? A third, sir? Yeah. Dimitro Sedor. <laughs> yes, yes, my dear sir. You're quite right. It's quite right indeed. <laughs> Good night, my friends. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> part of this rail, Dr. Miller? Uh, the deck is free to all passengers, Mr. Thurston. Oh, thank you. It's lonely out here at this hour of night, isn't it? That's why I chose it. I prefer quiet and solitude on the nights before I operate. Operate? That is why I'm traveling to Xenophon. The pilot of the plane carrying the isotopes had his skull fractured in the crash. Oh. Funny thing about that crash, Doctor. Oh? Yeah, I checked on it. The weather was calm and clear. Too bad if the pilot died during the operation and couldn't tell how it happened. There are other things more dangerous to human life than a scalpel in the hands of a trained surgeon, Mr. Thurston. Now, if you will excuse me, I think I'll retire. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Hmm. Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, we're going to be killed, murdered, even die, maybe. 
Whoa, well, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pagan. Who's going to commit all this mayhem? Uh, the phony Colonel Creighton. That's who. I, I saw him in the, the cabin just, just now cleaning the cannon. Anyway, caliber 88 automatic. He's going to kill us. Whoa. <laughs> Don't get down. All right, Pagan, dig your nose up out of that deck. Whoever it was is gone in the shadows. Whoever it was, huh? Yeah. Who else could it be but that no good colonel? Dr. Mitter left in the direction of those shots. Hmm? Look over there now. What do you see? That darkness? Nothing but a big shadow. It, uh... Mr. Thurston, it's... It's moving. It's coming towards us. Mr. Thurston. A pleasant journey, this one to Zedophon, is it not, Mr. Thurston? <laughs> yes, a very pleasant journey, indeed. Mr. Thurston, why don't we get off this floating cattle car? Dr. Mitter sneaked the shore. Special priority. She's got an operation coming up. Huh. Maybe if I play sick too, we can... Hey, Mr. Thurston, look. Look out, somebody's jumping on us. Relax. That's nothing but the shadow of the cargo net swinging overhead. Imagine that. But why do they have to keep swinging that thing over our heads all the time? Couldn't they... Oh, my dear Thurston. Viewing the harbor, I see. That's right, Sado. I was wondering where that plane of yours crashed. Oh, yes, yes. Unfortunate accident. Uh, notice that mooring buoy in the bay? The ship anchored nearby? That marks the spot. Hmm. Looks like that boat has diving tackle rigged on it. <laughs> your eyes are as keen as your brains are. Yes, that is a sponge diving boat. One of my fleet, Mr. Thurston. Oh, so you're in the sponge business too, eh? Quite right, sir. I find it a dull venture, but uh, quite profitable. As profitable as handling radioactive isotopes on the Eastern European market? <laughs> you joke, of course. Uh, no, no, I do not think the sponge business would be as profitable, but uh, perhaps far less dangerous. <laughs> that is my answer, sir. A good one, is it not? <laughs> yes, <laughs> a very good one indeed. <laughs> What's so good about it? He didn't answer nothing. That's why it's good, Pagan. Huh? Well, anyways, with him and Dr. Mitter out of our way, we got nothing to worry about. Hey, Mr. Thurston, the cargo net stepped right over us. Hey, look! Jump, Pagan, the net's slipping. Hey. Jump, man, jump! Oh. Mr. X. Those crates fell right where we were standing. Tons of them. Yeah. They couldn't yeah. match us. Flattered and flat, Jack. Yes, even flatter. Hmm. What an accident. I wonder if Colonel Creighton had caught it that. Huh? Colonel Creighton? What's he got to do with this? I don't know, but he's standing over there beside the donkey engine. Beside the... Mr. Thurston? That engine? Yeah. It handles the cargo net that spilled over our heads. <laughs> Yeah, take this money. Circulate right around the village. See what you can buy with it. Learn if there's any black market for American goods. You know, cigarette, money, anything. Mm -hmm. Then meet me back here at the hotel. Mr. Cax, you don't depend on that. <laughs> but what are you, you going to do? Check on an operation. Huh? I want to see how dangerous a scalpel in the hands of Eleanor Mitter can really be. <laughs> Ken, you've come to the hospital to check up on me. Not quite, Eleanor. I want to talk to your patient, that pilot, about accidents to cargoes of isotopes. That is, if he's still alive. You talk like a fool. Do you think he deliberately fractured his skull in such an accident merely to make it look legitimate? No, I think the fractured skull was the only accidental thing about that plane crash. I see. And I suppose an unsuccessful operation would mean I deliberately let him die in order to seal his lips. Did he die, Eleanor? The operation was successful. Come. I will take you to see him. I hope this will end these suspicions you have, Ken. This is his room. 
kind of drafty, isn't it? Oh, that stupid nurse left the window open. She knows the patient is vulnerable to pneumonia. Don't, 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 don't bother him. He's not vulnerable to anything. What? He's dead. Ken. It must have been post-operative shock. Or an embolism. Yes. Or that knife sticking out of his chest. <laughs> Let me see. Mr. X gave me 200 clams. Uh, I spend only 100. Mm -hmm. If I give him back 30, that makes a profit of 70 bucks. Uh, not bad, not bad. Hmm. Maybe I better figure out again, see that I don't cheat myself. He gave me 200 simoleons. Good evening, Mr. Zell Schmidt. Oh, oh, hello, Colonel Creighton. Nice night, isn't it? <laughs> now, let's see. 200 clams. Uh, that's right. Colonel Creighton. Your identification is correct, Zell Schmidt, despite the darkness of this side street. Have you noticed no one else is around? Yes, well... <laughs> it was nice seeing you, Colonel. Drop around again sometimes. I... <gasps> that knife. Be careful with that knife. I shaved once already today. I'm going to ask you one question, Zellschmidt. If you wish to live, you will answer it correctly. Who is Ken Thurston? Oh, is that all? <laughs> well, that's a cinch. He's the... Oop. <gasps> no. No, 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 I can't. Answer, Zellschmidt. Who is he? Th that knife on my throat. Who is Ken Thurston? He is... He is... Oh, forgive me, Mr. Thurston. He is the man called X. Ah, Mr. Thurston. Come in, sir. Please come in. Thanks. Oh, welcome. Surprise, sir. Most welcome. <laughs> I must confess I expected you to call. Yes, we've got something to talk over. Perhaps we have, sir. Perhaps we have. What uh, subject did you have in mind? Radioactive isotopes. <laughs> By God, sir, I admire you. Straight to the point. No beating around the bush for you, eh? Well, what for? We both know you were behind those accidents. Why not admit it? Why not, sir? Why not indeed? The airplane pilot is dead. There are no witnesses here. I don't mind speaking frankly. Good. Then tell me if I've got the record straight. <laughs> Certainly, sir. You had a two-way purpose behind those accidents, Sador. Bleeding the ESA funds to Greece of some $3 million and seeing that those isotopes ended up in the country you're working for. <laughs> I said you were a brilliant man, sir. Your deductions are quite sound. Unfortunately, I've succeeded only partially. Both shipments were lost at sea. I found it impossible to recover them. Uh, so you see, we've both lost. I have no isotopes. You have no proof of crime. Our little contest ends in a draw. Okay, Sador, that's that. Looks like I go back to Athens. And I, sir, return to my sponge diving business. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the process, why not drop around tomorrow? I'll take you aboard one of my boats. You might find it interesting. Maybe I'll take you up on that, Sador. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. <laughs> well, my dear, did you hear it all? You always were a talkative fool, Demetro. Why did you mention the diving? <laughs> my dear Eleanor. Please be to be apparently frank, yet tell him nothing. Now he will leave Xenophon and we shall have nothing further to worry about. You mean I shall have nothing further to worry about? Huh? Does that mean I have? <laughs> Don't be foolish, my dear. What could it possibly be? Just this, Demetro. <laughs> Just this. Diving suit telephone working all right. Clear like a shell, Mr. Thurston. Good. How's the motor operating the air pump? <laughs> that little putt putt is purring like a puppy. See that it stays that way. I'll keep it running smooth like a carpet. Unless maybe the crew of this boat is coming back. Don't worry. They've ordered to stay away officially. Then who is coming uh, this way in a speedboat? Speedboat? Well, what do you know? It's that pretty little pill peddler, Dr. Mitter. 
Hello. Is that you, Mr. Zellschmidt? That's right, Miss Dr. Middle. Welcome on board. Oh, thank you. And Mr. Thurston, where is he? I must speak with him at... The air pump. The diving equipment is working. Sure. We're learning how to be sponges. Aren't we, Mr. Thurston? Oh, I see. The diving rig phone is working. Let me have it. Dr. Mitter, you've got a gun. You... Mr. Thurston! My hand is over the transmitter. He cannot hear you. Nor could he hear the sound of... Shots! Oh. Move Shots. backward quickly and stay there. Ken? Ken, do you hear me? Eleanor, what are you doing aboard? I followed you from your hotel, Ken. I have important news. Oh? You were right. Those accidents to the isotopes were planned. The Metro Sado was behind it. He... Uh, but if you are diving out here... You know his plan. Yeah, that's right, I don't know. He had his agents dump the isotopes into the ocean to make the accidents look legitimate. Then he'd recover them with his sponge divers. As you are trying to do now. The isotopes are right below the boat, I don't know. A diver can get to them in the morning. So my work's almost over for the night. Ask Pagan to pull in the lines, will you? First, darling, I think you should know something. Demetro Sedor has a partner. I was working with him. Where are you, Eleanor? But now that Sedor is dead, all the profits shall be mine. Sedor dead? Yes, darling, I disposed of him. As I did with the pilot. And as I am going to do with you. Pretty confident, aren't you? Why shouldn't I be? You'll find it rather difficult to breathe down there with your air supply gone. Too bad it had to end this way, darling, but... Goodbye. Dr. Miller, the air pump, it stopped. Mr. Thurston... Yes, Sir Schmidt. And now it is your turn. Mr. Thurston, help! Oh, you fool. He cannot help you now. He's got... You're wrong, Eleanor. You! Better take our gun, Colonel. With pleasure. Let me have it, Doctor. All right, Thurston. You're alive. And, and Colonel Creighton. Of the Athenian secret intelligence. Sure. <laughs> you made a mistake not seeing the telephone wire going into the cabin. Oh. No, no, Pagon. Her mistake was trading in her physician's oath for a handful of money. She's going to pay for that mistake now. Yeah. So will all those who trade in the same kind of coin. Someone said it long ago, much better than I, remember? What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And now here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, we've planned a low-key mystery for you with a twist at the finish I think you'll find interesting and kind of startling. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pig on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production and is directed by Jack Johnstone with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's transcribed story was written by Sidney Marshall. Heard in tonight's cast were Will Wright as the chief, Alan Reed as Dimitro Sador, Joan Banks as Dr. Mitter, Dan O'Herlihy as Colonel Creighton, and Peggy Weber as Mrs. Mastos. All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Sunday afternoon chimes mean mystery and action on NBC. Mike Waring, better known as the Falcon, lends his debonair touch to the solution of another mystery, followed by that polite, diplomatic, and very deadly detective, the Saint. After the Saint, the big guy steps into mystery and danger, and your Sunday afternoon of mystery concludes with that new private eye, Charlie Wilde.